Okay, hello everyone. Um, as you guys know, I've been interviewing uh, friends of mine who are all doing cool stuff just to talk with them a little bit about their craft and what they're doing. Uh, this time I have my friend Jarrett Rush with us. Jarrett, how are you doing? I'm fantastic, how are you? Doing well. Now, full disclosure, we've already been like chatting for about an hour because uh, I've, I've roped you into a writer's group with me. Uh, this has been part of a long, like multi-year plan of mine to like pick your brain because when you and I first met, uh, we were working at the same uh, place and found out that you were essentially already doing the thing that I want to do, which is you were writing Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been uh, writing your stuff? And I, and I will say it, like I've made no apologies about it. I basically sat you down. I was like, okay, tell me how you do it. <laughs> and I'm going to try to do that because I, there was something about your approach to it that I just thought I was like, yes, that, that makes sense. <laughs> so, so how long have I been, uh, I've been doing it? I've been yeah. publishing my own stuff since uh, 2011, uh, okay. writing for as long as I can remember. I mean, the, the first story I remember writing was as a kid in second grade. Uh, I co-wrote a story with, a, with another kid in second grade. Uh, only thing I really remember is the horse. It was about a horse. Neither of us had horses. Neither of us, had, as far as I know, had ridden horses beyond the, you know, the thing the parents stuck in the back of the zoo and they walk you around in a circle. That was yeah. the extent of our experience with horses. But we wrote about a horse named Weeds. I don't remember anything else about the book or the story but that. But I've been writing ever since then. You know, that's just the thing I've always done. Uh, got really serious about it uh, back in mid 2000s. So my wife said, hey, you, you're already doing this anyway. So there's things you can be doing to, to you know, take this more seriously. And so I, I did and, and started really kind of figuring out worlds and, and sort of plotting things out and, and, and figuring out what, what, what are the stories I really want to tell. And I always came back to sort of these pulpy style stories. You know, the stuff I write is pretty short. And not, it's, you know, between 20 and 40,000 words. It's not, it's not, you know, doorstop novels. Uh, it's, it's sort of the, the, the dime fiction kind of stuff. Uh, space adventures, you know, near future sci-fi, uh, a little bit of urban fantasy style stuff as well. I, I write under two names, my name and then uh, another a pen name, Sam Renner. Uh, I see the difference in the type of stories I tell with those names, but maybe others don't. But, but for me, there's enough of a distinction that I want to separate the two. Uh, but been doing that since uh, 2011, and I'm publishing the probably 12th story here in. Uh, I guess it comes out in a couple of days. So nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to Sam in just a second. But I, I will say um, you have a background also in journalism. Mm -hmm. um, do you? And I don't know what it is, but when I was a creative writing teacher. I always used to tell my students, I'm like, if you want to become a good writer, and I know this is probably be controversial, we'll, we'll get people posting in the comments about this. But I actually told people, I was like, if you want to be a good writer, don't get a creative writing degree. Don't, don't pursue creative writing in college. Take creative writing classes. Mm -hmm. But I was like, if you really want to be like a nuts and bolts, good writer, uh, get a journalism degree. That was yeah. my advice. And, and this is coming from someone who was an English major. But um, when I took writing classes as an English major, I found what we did a lot of, do, what we spent a lot of time doing was sort of the dream journal approach to creative writing, where it's mm -hmm. like, let's write about our feelings and let's figure out how to have the most feelings yeah. on the page. And I'm being a little bit, I'm being a little bit cynical here. But what I found was, was when I hung out with my journalism friends, they were actually like talking about like verbs and active voice and construction and like how to control the beats. And they were really into the craft of it more than, than, than those, uh, those dream journaling creative writing classes. Was that your experience? Did you feel that your journalism background has helped you with that or is it unrelated for you? I think I think it's done two things. I think it's and it's and it's good and bad. I think I think a journalism degree and a journalism experience teaches you how to be very plot focused with your writing. Mm -hmm. it is it is an A to B thing. How do we get from here to here? And you're thinking through those things. You know, the type, when you're thinking through, how do we tighten this up? What are the verbs we're using? You know, 
what is the plot and the story we're telling? It, it doesn't give you a lot of time. It doesn't encourage you at least to be sort of let's, let's take a moment and, and, and think about the feelings and, 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 and have a, a, a moment for your character to, to just do some self-assessment. Like there's not, you don't have that because that's not what's, you know, you have eight inches to tell the story in, in newspapers and that's not very long. And you have who, what, where, when, why, and how to get into that, that story, you know? And, and so you're very focused on, on tight writing and, and getting the essentials down. But that, I think that hurts you. I think there's a reason I don't write long and I don't do what my, like a lot of my stuff doesn't have subplots and, and you know, C stories and D stories. It, it, it is an A story with maybe a little bit of B story, but there's not much, you know, there's not a lot of time for the, the characters to think about how they feel. And I think a lot of the, the, I think, I don't know because my writing suffers. It's just my style of, of storytelling. But I think that, you know, the reason I don't have that is because of my, I spent, 20 years in journalism and and even you know i'm, I'm in marketing now for, for the day job and i think there's some of that too like you it's there's a limited amount of space and you need to get there's points you need to hit and the stuff that gets pulled away at least in the fiction is that 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 sort of moment of self-assessment or or thinking about feelings and things like that so i think i think it's it's good and bad uh I think you learn how to balance it. And I think I actually have to make myself sometimes pause and, and insert some of those moments where the characters can think about how they feel or, or how this is affecting them emotionally. Yeah. You have to kind of unjournalism yourself a little bit. Yes. <laughs> well, and I, I do find that the journalism majors and the people that work in marketing, you also don't get too precious with your muse. It mm -hmm. is, I have to write this by the end of the day or I can't go home until we send this off to the client. Right. Like there's no, like, I'm just not feeling like writing today. It's, I, yeah. I have to write because if not, I don't have a job. And I do find that that lends itself more towards being, well, very unprecious with your craft because it's like, I, I, I need to keep writing because mm -hmm. if I don't write, then I'm not a writer. <laughs> I'm something yeah, else. I think that's very true. I think, yeah, it, it, you don't have time to get stuck. You don't have time to, 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 to not feel it. It's just, you have to go and you have to get it done. And it does help, you know, I'll, I'll have days when I sit down to write fiction and it's just like, Oh, it's not, it's, it's pulling teeth. Like um, yeah. it's, it's a struggle for every single word, but, but once you get into it, you kind of find a flow and you, you get back into the story. And, and those days are usually the days after I haven't written for a while. I've been, I've been in editing mode right now because I'm trying to release some stuff pretty quickly. And so I haven't written as much on the other books in this series that I'm working on. And the last three or four days I've started to sit down and write again. And it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's, 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 it's more of a struggle today, but yeah. you also, because I have that background where you don't have the, 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 the opportunity to just say, ah, not, not happening today. Yeah. You just sit down and you, and you push and you make, make sure you get the words and you make sure that you, know, you just keep making progress. Well, and your approach to writing, and this is something that you know, I mentioned earlier, really appealed to me, is you, you do your work, I would say, exclusively through Amazon KDP, the self-publishing platform. And, and the goal really for you is, what, what is about like, how many, how many books, and I say books, but like the novellas, the shorter length reads, and that's by design, but how many are you just shooting for every year? This year, I wanted to get six done. It, it really depends on the series and the, and the length. You know, the, the, the stuff I'm working on right now, it's all coming out to be 15 to 20,000 words. I can get that done pretty quickly. Uh, I wanted to release six over about 12 week period. That's probably not going to happen, but I think I can still get six within the year. Uh, but just, I, I think that the way that that platform works, you're, you're rewarded for speed, you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 and whether or not you're rewarded for a shorter length, I, I'm not sure yet. But, you know, I think that, that to make this work for me and, and the, the way I want to tell stories and make it fit the way I just naturally write, that shorter is better. And so I'm, I, I'm shooting for about six this year. I, I had a very uh, eager goal a few years ago of 12, one a month. And I <laughs> That's just, great. I completely missed. I, mean, I don't, I mean, I'm at 12 books now with, you know, yeah. maybe 15 by the end of the year, but, but uh 
I, I really, you know, I, I think you're rewarded for speed because the people who read on the, that, that platform, they're reading eBooks. They are, you know, the, the, the term that a lot of people use is whale reader. They read a lot. That's what they do for entertainment. They're not movie people. They're not TV people. I like to read. And so yeah. they consume a lot of fiction quickly. And so you're wanting to, and there are enough of them where you can make a career out of it. If you can, you can you know, reach them with something. And so speed, they want, they like the last one, they want the next one and they want it quickly. And so that's what the platform allows you to do. And, and it's something I think could work. I've, I've had this and I'm probably rambling now, but I've had my, I had this theory. So I was in journalism, got laid off and then had just started. Like you do. Yeah. Yeah, of course it's journalism, right? So that's, <laughs> that's the natural end for any career in journalism. Uh, had this thought, it's like, I, and this is, this is back in 2011, late 2011. It's like, why can't we do fiction in the same way they do TV? And I wasn't the only one to have the thought. A lot of people had the thought. And I think it worked for a little while on the platform, but then it stopped working for some reason. It just wasn't, people weren't able to get that serialized style story to take. And I just have never let go of the thought that, it could work. And I think that as we've moved toward, this is before Netflix was what Netflix is now. And there wasn't a Hulu and a Disney plus and, and this ability to binge content the way that people can now. Yeah. I, I think, and so I think that that can work in fiction as well. We'll see if I'm right or not. If, even if I'm not, I'm enjoying telling these stories and, and writing them this way. And this kind of feels like the thing I want to do. And so uh, it's just the style I, I like. And, and we'll see if I'm right or not, but I think, I still think that this idea of serialized fiction, big story told quickly through smaller episodes, priced right. I don't want to, you know, it's not, I'm not asking four or five dollars, they're 99 cents, right? So I'm not, I'm not asking for a large investment, even to tell the whole story, it's going to be like six, seven bucks. So you're not, you're not out of a ton of money, uh, but we'll see if I'm right. I'm, I'm hoping I am. I'm hoping that at some point this, the first one catches on and, and, They'll just people want to gobble all the rest of them up. So, yeah. well, and it, and it also seems like I mean the type of books you're writing. I mean, I said pulp fiction, but I, I say that as a compliment because mm. it harkens back to the days of the of the pulp magazines yeah. where you did have writers that were just cranking out these relatively short stories. They'd get you know five cents a word or however much they were getting paid back then, uh, maybe five cents a story. I don't know, yeah. but like. But like, you know, we're talking like Edgar Rice Burroughs, we're talking mm -hmm. Robert E. Howard, we're talking, you know, Isaac Asimov and like some of these old, old guard yeah. um, genre of writers. And, and I think the genre was probably part of what allowed them to work so quickly because mm -hmm. there were certain story beats that they knew they were having to hit. Um, and so it feels like you're really operating out of that tradition, which is, yeah, there are some people that just cannot get enough of science fiction. And mm -hmm. I've got, you want science fiction? I've got a good science fiction story for yeah. you. And, yeah. and, and we're going to, and we're going to go on this journey with it. So yeah, it seems like it pulls from some of that tradition. It does. I, I think it does. When I, when I first started writing, I connected with, uh, well, I first started publishing. Uh, yeah. I connected with a, a few different people on, on a, through Twitter and, and, and in Facebook, they were really into that world. And they, they'd sort of, they, they, were, they were recreating those magazines is what they were doing. That was their, you know, they were publishing themselves, but it really just, I, I, I always knew about it and, and, and always was intrigued by it. But once you're watching them do it, made me think, I feel like this is something I want to do. And, and something I want to, the, the, the approach I want to take to, to my fiction. And it's, it's what I've done since the beginning. But it's also, it's something I, you know, I appreciate and I like, and I, you know, I've read those stories. And I enjoy reading those stories. And so it's just, it's, it's the, it's the, it feels like it fits me and my style pretty well. Now, I was looking over here at uh, your Amazon page for Jarrett Rush was uh, chasing filthy lucre. Was that the first one that you did that was, with this platform? Yep. Yeah, that was the first. And that was part of, um, the new Eden series, which has got, let's see. It has is that three books in it. Three books so, in that yeah, one. Uh, Chasing Philly Lucre is the first. Uh, Finding Fate of Light is the second. And then there's a third story that happens uh, in it just after, it, it happens kind of in between those two. And it's yeah. called Digit City. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a shorter piece uh, focused on, uh, 
a, a, a secondary character in Finding Fate, Finding Fate of Light. So. And then, yeah, I, I, we could go through all these books, but let's uh, switch over to Sam Renner. What was the decision like uh, to, to take on a second name there? So the decision was uh, the stuff that I did under my own name was near future earth-based science fiction. So speculative fiction. So, you know, you have Chasing Filthy Lucre. That's not that far into the future. There's some stuff happening. You know, it's, it's a little bit different. Your data is a drug is sort of the idea there. Uh, I'd written another piece that was sort of zombies and aliens, uh, zombies and aliens mixture, but it's again, all based on earth. The stories were based out of Dallas. Uh, I wanted to do something. I had an idea for a story set in, uh, on a space station. And that felt far enough of like a, a space opera style story that I didn't want to mix the two names. I wanted Sam Renner to be the name I used to tell my, my, my space opera, more military sci-fi space opera kind of fiction. And then I kept Jarrett as a, a near future sci-fi only because I thought that the readership was different enough. You know, I think if you like space opera, you like space opera. You're probably not going to be a cyberpunk reader, which is what Chasing Philly Luker is. Yeah. So I think that just it was mostly a, a branding thing, if nothing else. Like you know, I wanted to build a brand around a the space opera writer, and that's that's where that's where Sam came from. Do you think? And and I'm kind of presuming the answer already, but do you think that Sam Renner is a little bit more focused, whereas the Jarrett Rush books are kind of a little bit more spread out? Well, for sure, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like, yeah, the, the Sam Renner is he writes space-based far future sci-fi yeah yeah Yeah, because and um the first book of yours that i read was uh zulu universe book one which is lost and then there's a second book power down which i haven't read yet but i really liked and and we talk about you know these books being really short quick reads like I, yeah, I mean, occasionally I like reading those really heavy books that, you know, take me time to really dig through. But part of the joy of reading Zulu Universe, and I really did like that book, was that I was having fun while reading it. <laughs> and it sounds crazy that I have to even say that. But I think at a certain point, some readers forgot that books are supposed to just be enjoyable, too. Yeah. And that's, that, that really is when I write, that's what I want. I just want to tell a fun story. Like I don't, I, I don't necessarily come to it with, I, here's the message I want to convey. Here's the point I want to get across my, my, my larger social commentary and I'm going to do it through science fiction. Like it's, I enjoy writing this stuff. I, I, you know, it, it, it's as much to entertain myself as it is to entertain anybody else, but really I want you to read it and have fun and be able to escape for a little bit and just, yeah kind of lose yourself in a, in a, in a good, a good story well told. And then when you're done, you're done and you go back to your, to your life. And I'm not going to ask for a week or two weeks of your time because that's, it's 35,000 words and it's not, doesn't take that long to read that much. So. Well, and, and I'll just go back to, to lost, but that's not to say that there weren't some touching moments in there. It wasn't all like John Wayne style fist fights and like, and so I don't want people to think that, what you're writing is just, you know, explode. It's not, it's not Michael Bay in space type stuff. No. It's no, there, there, it was touching. It was moving. It was interesting. It was intriguing. And there was, there was a lot of the fun elements in it that, that made me go, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in for the, the right here. And, and, you know, the biggest compliment you can ever give to an author when they're a friend of theirs is to say, I forgot that it was my friend that wrote it. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the compliment. That's the compliment we're all fishing for is, did it feel like you were having to read a friend's book or did it feel like you were reading a book? And what you want yeah. is, yeah, I just felt like I was reading a book. I'm yeah. Like, ah, that's good. It's, it's, yeah, it, it, and, and I, I tend to think sometimes I don't include those, those emotional elements, and, but there are some. There's a, yeah. you know, the, 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 main, the main character has some external things that are happening that he's, he's struggling with and dealing with. So yeah, there are, there are emotional moments. It's not just a shoot em up. Let's big explosions and, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So in, in some ways lost felt like kind of a quiet build up to something that's probably going to be a little bit bigger in the second book. Yeah. I think that this is again, because I, I, I don't know why I do this. I tend to do this. I create a place where there are a lot of things can happen. 
You know, it, it's like I, I want to mind when I'm when I'm figuring out a setting. I want to make sure that it's not just there's not much that could happen here. I want to be able to kind of build on it if I want to and, and connect and tell different stories of different people. So the, the setting for loss is, is, a, is a transfer station at the far edges of the universe. It's the place that ships that are doing the intergalactic travel uh, come and restock. That was at least the thought, right? And so they, they would, this would just be a place that was very active, always humming, you know, humming with, with activity. And, and I could tell a lot of different stories that just, that were always built around this place, but didn't necessarily involve these same set of characters. Mm -hmm. But I had five books, six books sort of plotted out in my head that, that all build on each other. The mystery that starts in the first one continues and with ramifications happening in the last ones and then the big climax in book number six. So, yeah. but yes, it, it, there, there will be more coming uh, after I finish this next series. I'm, I wanna go back. I've got, I have the book, the third book plotted and, and started, I've written the first few, few chapters of that, but, but uh, I do wanna go back to it because I do like those folks. I like the characters a lot and, and I wanna write more about them. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about Galaxy Run because that's kind of the big project right now for you is mm -hmm. uh, you, you got really ambitious and you just like kind of went for it with this one. Yeah, uh, so Galaxy Run is uh, my Star Wars story. That's kind of how I describe it. It's, and not in that it's, you know, there's an empire, uh, you know, a, an empire and, and, and rebels necessarily, but it's, it's, it's lots of planets, lots of different types of creatures, aliens, it's alien species. Uh, there's blaster guns, there's space battles, there's spaceships that, you know, fly fast and, and, and shoot each other out of, out of the sky. So it, it's, it's that style story. You know, Lost is not that. Lost doesn't have aliens. Lost doesn't have, uh, you know, it's just humans in space. This is more of a just, it's sort of a space fantasy, space science fiction adventure kind of story. I think I got inspired by The Mandalorian. In to tell the story this way, not to tell the Mandalorian style story, but to, to, you know, to tell the story, shorter episodes, all of it connected, but it's all episodic. These things could stand alone if you want to read them that way. Uh, but yeah, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I want to, I want to, I want to really test my theory of if you release things quickly, can it, how well can it work? And so I am, the, the third book of the series comes out on, uh, in a couple of days on Friday. And then uh, book four, probably in a month or two, it should come out. I was trying to do every two weeks. Uh, I missed that. I just, I, I was over eager, but I do want to make sure I want to do the first three and then be able to do the second three in a pretty rapid succession and not space it out where it's months from now, you know? Uh, but I, it, it just, it's, it's fun to write. Like, like <laughs> it, it, nothing else, even if it doesn't take off and nobody reads it, I'm enjoying writing it and, and you know, figuring out how this bigger story unfolds. Yeah, because book one and book two are already out. Book mm -hmm. one is Galaxy Run, The Case, which people can mm -hmm. find on Amazon. And then book two, Galaxy, well, episode, I should say, episode one, yep. The Case. Episode two is Umel. Yep. And then episode three is, uh, is it Abilia? Abilia, yep. Yeah. So, and then there, there's three more after that. Yes. There's a, the, the fourth one is Makura. And then the fifth one is, I've got the name, but I don't have it in front of me. And then the sixth one will be uh, Askin. Is, yeah. So it's, they're all named after the planet or the location the story takes place. So Umel is a planet. The case is not a planet, but that's sort of like what gets the story kicked off. Then everything after that is named after the planet or the, the location where this, the story takes place. Yeah, I, I envision like with that episode, like you always get those really large block letters on the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever it's like, and now here's where we are next. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, I, 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 the next thing I want to do whenever I start the next project, I, I really want to figure out a way to, to, to give it that feel in, in the book and whether that's how it's formatted or, or the way it's written and the way the story is structured. I want it to feel very much like the, and now here's where we are yeah. kind of, kind of approach. Yeah, I feel like, and this is one of the th reasons why your approach, and I say it's your approach, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that's, that are doing this, mm -hmm. is I found that with a lot of writers, we spend so much time chasing after agents, chasing after, you know, you, you read these articles in like writer's market where it's like 12 ways to write the perfect query letter and, you know, 
20 different writers workshops where you can meet a hundred different agents. And mm -hmm. it's all about the business of getting published. And that becomes like the hobby. Whereas I feel like with the approach that you're doing, it's more about, I'm just kind of waiting for the industry to catch up with what I'm doing because mm -hmm. I feel like this is probably where everything's heading. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying that traditional publishing is going to die, but it does feel like guys, we could just write <laughs> like we don't have to. <laughs> well, I think, I think traditional publishing at this point serves a different type of writer and serves a different type of reader. They're aiming for a different type of reader. They're aiming for that yeah. person who reads a book or two or three a year. And, yeah. and, and for a long time, that's what I wanted to do. I, I, I joined my first writers group, uh, you know, 10 years ago and two of the people in there were, were thinking about self publishing and I was, and I was staunchly against it. It's like, no, this is, a, I, I don't want, that's, there's no gatekeeper. There's nobody, that, you know, and there's no, there's, there, it's just not the way I think you should do it. It's not the way I'm going to do it. Then I went to my first writer's conference and every session I was in the, one of the questions at the Q and a time was tell us how you found your agent. And, Almost every person at those eight at that that said, "Don't listen to me because my story is different than everybody else's." And there was always they knew somebody who knew somebody who knew an agent, or they had a friend who was a writer who had an agent. And they put their book in front of them, and that's how they found them. And I just left that so discouraged. Yeah, it was like there's like, like this is just it's all dumb luck. That's what it felt like. And like it doesn't matter how good you are as a writer, you know it doesn't. It, that's not part of what's in the equation here. Then about a year later, I was still writing and still enjoying doing what I was doing and, and creating. But about a year later, Amazon launched KDP. I was, I, I don't know where I found it, but I found it. And one of the things I always uh, disliked about the, the self-publishing world, and this is before eBooks took off, was that just how much, like there was no distribution model for it. Like there was no way to get your book in front of people unless you bought a bunch of copies of it and then figured out how to sell it. You know, you're not going to get in a bookstore self publishing because they can't return it. They can't return unsold copies. And so they've, it's sunk cost for them. And you're not going to, you can't go to enough local craft fairs or whatever and sell your book because you're just hoping to, to find people. But if it's an ebook and it's a digital file, I can do that. And I'm not, I don't have to invest anything. And then re I realized that's different than, and, you know, I, I took my disappointment and, and, and then looked at this and thought, well, there's so many opportunities and possibilities with this. And I, and I, like I said, I still think that this idea of short and fast can work. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, like you said, it's just a matter of getting, letting everybody else catch up with me. <laughs> like I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a visionary by any means. I mean, like you said, also other people are doing this, they're trying it. They're doing it with longer work. I'm doing it with shorter work. Yeah. But I think it can work. And I think that, that, that you know, the, the, the ebook has, is, is targets that targets that well reader targets that person who wants to read a lot, who, who doesn't get caught up in the, I have to have the pages. I'm one of those, I like reading actual books. I'll read both, but I, I still enjoy the, the tactile experience of, of flipping through a book. Right. And so I, I enjoy that. Yeah, still. I'm all, <laughs> this is, yeah, I've, I, I do it when I do read ebooks, I read them on my phone. Like it's just, I, you know, my phone is large enough now that it's like not, a, I'm not having to flip every two seconds because I'm through the page. But, but I, I think that the, it just, that there's enough of those folks out there that you can make a career and I'm, I'm, I'm sold out on my model and I'm going to see if I can't make it work. And yeah. if it doesn't work, I'm just going to enjoy writing my stories and I'll have something for my kids to look back on and say, Hey, look what dad did. So. Well, and I feel like we're getting to a point now where agents are probably so overwhelmed with queries and submissions and just everyone going to them that there probably is a market for the agent who's now looking on Amazon KDP and goes, oh, I hear this guy's actually been doing some pretty cool stuff or I've heard good things about this person and I'm going to check them out. And so I, I feel like there, there's maybe room for, for that because I, I would imagine you wouldn't say no to a book deal. No, if somebody wants, no, if somebody wants to 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 take on me as a, <laughs> uh, you know, my, I'll, I'll send, gladly send you my email address. Then you know, I'll, you know if, 
happy to happy to have the conversation. You know, that's yeah. not, I would not say no to that. But for now, this is fun. And, you know, I'm not making enough money that I would, you know, I, I think there are people out there who have cracked the code on, on Kindle and KDP, and they're making enough money that they can politely tell a, an agent, either no thanks, or these are the terms of the deal. Yeah, I'm not there yet. You know, uh, it, if they would like to, to, to have a conversation, happy to have a conversation. I do think that that is, fiction didn't have a minor leagues before, you know, and I think that to a degree, that's what the Amazon has, has kind of provided agents a little bit. You know, you can, hey, this person actually has figured something out. This is resonating with somebody. They're selling a lot of these books. Yeah. They're making a lot of money. Let me talk to them. Let me, let me, and so I think you can have, if those folks who are, who are, who are doing great aren't going to necessarily come over. But those folks who are that, that mid list of the, of the, the, the indie authors or the, the sub published authors, I think you, they, that's a place that if they're finding something that's successful and they find somebody you can write, they could probably could have a decent, pick a, have a conversation and then have an author then in their stable that has all the stuff that they do ask for. Because at the writer's conferences I've gone to, I have talked with agents. I've never really gone looking for an agent, mm -hmm. but I, because the writer's conference offered, you know, what, what came with part of the cost was an opportunity to talk with an agent. So I would just did. It's like, tell me what you're looking for. Tell me what's happening. And, and both times I talked to people, they both said, we need you. I, if you have a platform already in place, mm -hmm. then you are well ahead of the game. A lot of people, and it's not that they would make a decision based on that, but if it's between you and somebody else and you have a platform and they don't have a platform yet, you're getting chosen. And so yeah. by self-publishing, you, you, if you're doing it well, you should have a platform. You should have sort of a mailing list put together. You should have, an engaged social media following. You've done a lot of the legwork that you, that some people would have to do. Yeah. You know, if they if they haven't been self-publishing, if they've been focusing on the query letter and and the polishing <laughs> of the first five pages, that kind of thing, they, they haven't spent the time that, that you know you have. And so, it's a leg up for you. But I, I do think it's it's kind of a minor leagues now for for some of the folks in publishing. And there's a lot of people who who have that hybrid author experience. You know, that I have my things that I traditionally published, and I have my my sort of passion projects that nobody wants. There's a, what's his name? Anthony Ryan. He's a fantasy writer for the most part, but he wrote a series of about five, I think, books that he self-published called Slab City Blues. And they are really good. They're cyberpunk. It's completely different from what he writes as Anthony Ryan fantasy writer. Like he writes more epic fantasy, but he wanted to write these cyberpunk stories that, you know, the, 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 the publisher probably said, no, we're not going to be able to sell that because one, they're, they're novella length and two, they're, your audience isn't cyberpunk. Yeah. So they wouldn't be able to sell it to, except for probably some hardcore folks. But this gives them an opportunity to self-publish those things he wants to self-publish. And so there's plenty of people that are out there doing that kind of thing. You know, it's like, I have my traditional books. I have my self-published books. And these are the things that I want to, to do. I think, and, and partly I'm, I'm sorry, to, this is a very long answer to your question. No, this is great. <laughs> but I think you have folks like Stephen King, you know, who wanted to write. He, he, he's prolific and he's fast. And in the old model, you release one book a year. And so if I'm writing four books a year, you know, I suddenly have a pen name, you know, I'm, I'm Richard Bachman now and I'm publishing two books a year. And so I, I think that, that uh, self-publishing is, is giving those writers who are very prolific the opportunity to have your traditional career, one, two books a year. Because I think, you know, obviously the traditional world is getting away from that. You can only publish once a year thing. Mm -hmm. But you can do those shorter works. You can do other stuff that's maybe a little more experimental that you're, you probably have a good idea your readers would like. But yeah. the, the traditional world can't justify the cost to, to publish it. It gives them an opportunity to, to kind of write at, at, the, at the pace they want to write and the things they want to write. So, Yeah. Well, and I'm kind of of the opinion, like, not to get fatalistic, but I want to get to the end of my life and say, I have written this, right? Yes. I don't want to get to the end of my life and say, I have this one novel that I shopped around and I had a handful of agents who asked for a full request. Mm -hmm. Like, and I realize I'm being a little bit cynical, but I mean, I realize that those people are, are hopefully writing and producing work and getting stuff out there. But yeah. I just, I, I, I want to write. And so it's like, okay, I want to get to the end and be like, yeah, I wrote a handful of decent novels. This one's really good. This one's not as great. This mm -hmm. one was, you know, I mean, 
like, I, yeah, I don't want to get so precious about it that I forget to write. Yeah. And I think that, that if you get caught up in that traditional world, that is what happens. And there are yeah. plenty of stories. And I, and I would hear it all the time at, in writer groups, and writers conferences. It's like, write the book, try to sell it, but don't get focused on selling that book and not doing anything until you sell that book. Yeah. And, and I think this, this does, you know, I, I've always been somebody who's a, a maker. And I think for me, just having written the story was fine for a while, mm -hmm. but now it doesn't feel complete until I publish it. And that sounds, that, that maybe sounds a little bit weird, but like the, the, the making process for me is not just the end. It's like, okay, now I need a cover and I need a blurb and I need to figure out what's next and how do I market this and how do I get this in front of the right people. And so that is what I think of as the writing process now. Yeah. It's not just the initial creation. It's the, it's the writing, it's the editing it's and now it's the publishing that's that's what it feels like to me like okay that's done now and i and i, and I think you're talking about journalism i think that is another thing that helps a, a lot of journalists be good writers is that at the end of the day you have to be done like you don't have you don't have you can't you can't sit and stew on something or sit and, and rework it rework it rework it. it's like no that's as good as that's going to get and it's time to move on to the next thing and and i think that 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 may be more than anything else is the mentality of a journalist. That's where a journalist mentality helps in the fiction world is like being able to put something aside and saying, I don't have time to work on that anymore. That's, that has to be as complete as that gets. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And it's time to move to the next thing. And I think that's, that's another thing where I think that's another place where it's helped me. Cause I know I could sit if I wanted to and just, rework and rework and rework and rework. I mean, I think in, maybe you don't have this experience, but I always go back and if I'm rereading something I've written, it's like, oh, I wish I'd <laughs> thought that. Oh, I wish I had said it that way. A, and then here's the very obvious way to rephrase that. I've read that seven times before I published it. I had other people look at it. Nobody caught it, but I'm looking at it now. It's like, that's bad. And here's the obvious way to do that. And, but, but because I'm a, my journalism background, that's just not what you do. You know, like, you know, yeah. That's that is in a sufficient state. It's good enough. It's good, and that feels bad. Like, and yeah, good enough is not just meaning. Yeah, fine, whatever it's done. Yeah. No, I've put enough work into that. I've made that as good as I can make it. I know it's not perfect, but it's time to move on. Yeah. And I think that mentality is is maybe the thing that helps the most. You know, as far as, far as journalism experience goes. Oh, I mean, I was reading an interview with Ursula K. Le Guin last night she was talking about her masterpiece left hand of darkness and talking about things that she would have done differently mm -hmm. you know she's like oh gosh yeah i would have done that differently if i had written it now i mean it's like okay if 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 she can look back at her work which won like a hugo award and be like yeah I, i'm not too happy with that part yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly clearly none of us are above it <laughs> um well wrapping this up um I think for your work, correct me if I'm wrong, I would say that the chief point of contact for you is the newsletter, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So if, if someone wants to find your newsletter, if they want to hop on, what's the best way to kind of get plugged in with what you're doing and stay up to date on what you're putting out? Oh, this is where I fail as a, <laughs> as a writer and a marketer. Uh, I don't have a website. I, I, here's what I would say. JarrettWrites.blogspot.com. I need to update that more often, and I will. There is a, a a box at the top of that on the left side, I believe, if or the right side, I believe. If there's not, there will be by the time this goes live. <laughs> uh, on on where you can 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 learn more about me and get subscribed. I, I think uh, I have one for Jarrett Rush that I do most of my stuff through. I have one for Sam Renner as well. Sam also has a a a, a newsletter. I will make sure that those are both available on jarrettwrites.blogspot.com. That's, there you go. And, I, and I need so badly to, to create a, a website and I just have not done it. I've, Dude, Squarespace, it's the way to go. I know, and I've, I've played <laughs> with it before and I've done it. I just haven't ever committed to the cost. I know it's not, it's not expensive. I just have, I don't, yeah. I don't know why. I just have never, have never ever done it. It's been, and, and, and now look, now it's biting me in the butt. Well, you know what is actually easy though, since this will be like online, I will just put the link right down here. Oh, oh see, I, I'm so there, bad at this too. Right down here. This is where you right, can find right, it. Right down yeah, here. Yeah. It's right there. They can just click on that 
and get to your newsletter and they'll be all set. So anyway, uh, Jarrett, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. I appreciate and, it. And I will probably talk to you next week. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well. All right, you have a good evening. You too. Talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.